All right, welcome back. You're still watching in the game and favor Itua. Let's now go straight to the world of tennis. And we're, of course, at the ATP Marrakech. It was Matteo Berrettini who got the better of uh, Roberto Caballes Ben uh, 7 5 6 2 uh, to get uh, the toughest title in almost two years. Tough the last I don't know, couple of years, I would say. And thanks to them, also, I was able to overcome all the tough moments. Uh, my body wasn't allowing me to, to play, so thanks to these guys and the, the ones back home, I'm here. Thanks to my family that are watching. Congratulations to Matteo Berrettini for uh, achieving that first title in two years, and that's something to celebrate. Away from tennis, now to the round letter game of football. I will talk about, of course, uh, our own Rivers United, a, a club side in Nigeria, based in River State. The only representative before now uh, on the continent of Africa. They lost two goals to nothing against a uh, USM Alger right there in Algeria. So they finished two goals uh, to nothing, and on aggregate, two goals to one. Now, Balian striker Abdullah Kadu's brace secured the crucial win, propelling USM Alger to the semifinals for the second consecutive time. Now, despite the strong start, they broke the deadlock only in the 37th minute through Kadu's close range efforts. The second half saw heightened attack efforts from USM Alger, though played predominantly set in midfield. Now, despite Rivers United's near equalizer, USM Alger sealed the win with Kadu's second goal uh, right there in the 74th minute. Now, joining us to discuss or to reveal the game played right there in uh, All Jazz, Algeria, is a veteran journalist and manager, uh, progress manager, of course, uh, for uh, Wazobe FM, Portacot, Nigeria. China Cheru joins us this afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon, people. Good to be on your show. All right. A disappointing night for the Pride of Rivers as they failed to progress for what we saw. It wasn't a game Rivers United should lose when you look at how they played initially in the first half. I mean, what do you think went wrong? Was it uh, a case of uh, them being timid or intimidated by the fans? Or do you think something actually did not go that well for them on the night? Nigeria club has I'm always been intimidated by North African side. It's always been. You see, the United go away to North, North Africa and lose a couple of times. Yeah, we have also seen the Nigeria club win, like there is insurance who qualified in North Africa. We have seen Dolphins win a few times before, but there is this phobia Nigerian clubs have of the North Africa, especially when the home leg is in Nigeria. For the West United, um, they, they got a slim one year win at, in the first leg in New York. Maybe they should have scored more goals. They had the Algerians right there for the taking, but they couldn't score more goals. Then going to the second leg in Algeria, I think the Algerians unsettled them. The first was the issue of the VAR that wasn't going to work. Now the question that would be, was there anything that happened on that pitch that aided the Algerians because the VAR was not working? I saw the Rivers United media officers match report, and there was it, it showed no such thing. But I think that having that, that announcement come so close to the game, it goes away to unsettle the away side. Now, but what how the Rivers United manage that situation was a process to cap. Did ask the day after the game to be moved by 24 hours. What did they do about it? So I think the Algerians are set to them by that, by that same announcement. But having said that, Nigerian clubs always have that phobia of North Africa. The game was played at night. We hear the weather is very cold at night. I've been to North Africa a lot of times, and I know how cold it can be at night. In the home leg in, in Uyo, Rivers United tried to play the game at 2 p.m. Unfortunately for them, it's rained on the day. So it didn't turn out to be as cold as they would have wanted it to be. So here and there, I think if they had scored more goals in the first leg, then they wouldn't have had this, um, probably Algeria would have never had two goals to qualify. So the Russian said they are lost from the first leg, Leo. All right. Uh, one thing you made mention of uh, during the course of uh, the discourse, you said, uh, you know, VAR was supposed to be used. Yes, VAR was supposed to be used as is mandated by CAF, but it wasn't. Now, a statement from CAF reads, and I quote, for the last few days, CAF has been negotiated, of course, uh, to ensure that uh, VAR was used. But according to uh, CAF, VAR equipment uh, has been kept by the authorities at the entry port in Oran, Algeria, since Wednesday morning. And regrettably, the VAR equipment was only released at 7.30 today. That's on Sunday, the day of the match, making it impossible to drive the 400-kilometer distance between Oran and Algiers and make it on time for the match. Now, there are two questions in my, my mind now, uh, my, my head. Uh, should the game have allowed to be continued, knowing fully well that it was a per perico site, was mandatory 
for VAR to be used in that game. And there's been talk, there's these talks about whether by council that Africans have, are always a lenient or most of the times just bring out the fires and nothing else on these North African clubs. Or do you think the game should have been allowed to continue? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but the, the, the better question now is what did the Rivers United do when they got that information? They just say, okay, we go play. It's not a portion in Jesus' name. We think go B, go B. What did they write a strongly worded protest to CAF? Did they demand for the game to be moved by 24 hours? We don't have that information. But the better question should be what did they do about it? I agree. If CAF has said from this stage of, from a certain stage of the competition, VAR must be used, and the machine was used in Uyo for the first leg, then people should be asking, how come it was, it was not used in the second leg? Now, whether it was to the advantage or not, it should have been used. What did the should United do? We need to hear from the media office to know what they did that allowed that game to be played without VAR use. Favor. All right. Uh, also, to still add or to ask again, I mean, every now and then, it seems that the North Africans, whatever antics or tactics they bring into to play other teams in Africa, it seems to be working for them. But it seems every time it happens, the Nigerian club sides fail to realize or fail to learn from these issues. Sometimes we get to see how, when, during the COVID-19 era, we saw how most of the times, uh, most of the players from Nigeria, some of them, their key players will test positive to COVID-19. After the COVID-19 era, we've gotten other avenues which these North African club sides use. How do Nigerian club sides, or how do, how would they break, you know, away from these uh, barriers or the, the things that have been, you know, been better out to them? And what do you think they should do differently going into the next or uh, different competitions in the next uh, few months? I think Nigerian clubs are doing their bit. They, they, they have their own um, underhand things they do um, to upset clubs that come to play with them in, in Nigeria. Um, a lot of things I, I, mean, I won't be able to see on TV here. But Nigerian clubs, they know what they do. They do their bit. But having done your bit, you must be ready tactically. Now, how ready was Rivers United tactically in the first leg in New York? How ready we are they tactically in the second leg in Algiers? Because you, you, you involve yourself in all these shenanigans. It's okay to do that if it works for you and if CAFA allows it to happen. But having done that, how ready are you on the pitch? How does your team play? What is their shape? How do they transition from defense to attack? How do they defend the lead? How do they ensure they don't concede more goals? How do they frustrate the opposing team right there on the pitch? Our coach is able to do all of this. Can our clubs do all of this? Because it's more than just not having the, 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 the VR work. Okay, for the Vice United in the first leg, they applied to CAF for, to have their game played at 2 p.m. because they felt the temperature was at a certain level. That the moment it's air raining, what happens? So you must be ready for every situation. But I don't think our clubs are really ready for that. It, it takes more than just that. Do they practice this again? Yes, they do. To so what level is a different matter entirely? Yes, they do. But as a football club, the first thing a football club is that you have players are ready to play football. Are they ready to play football as a football club? That I don't see happening yet. We, we, are, we, we are not up to the level of North Africans. The earlier we accept this, the better for us. It will, it, will, it will reduce our blood pressure. We are not up to that level yet. So we should, we should strive to get to that level in terms of player purchases in terms of coaching, in terms of tactics, in terms of awareness, in terms of management, in terms of everything that a football club should do. We need to get to, the, to that level or close to the level. We are not very close to that level. So we continue to fall to them, no matter what we do. All right, uh, before we let you go, I mean, we've talked about uh, how we are not even up to uh, the level of uh, the North African teams, what they've been able to achieve over years. For Rivers United, they happen to be, at the moment, the only team in Nigeria that has even gotten to this stage back to back. How would you rate their performance this season when it comes to continental football? And uh, in, any time, in the next future, do you think that we'll have a team come up uh, to take Africa by storm, aside what we've seen in the past from AIBA International? Rivers have done well in terms of results, right? 
in terms of performance, it's different entirely. But in terms of the because they've got the results, they've, they've been at this stage twice now in six, in six session. So in terms of results, they've done well. Now ask if we will have another club that can do this because Russia and I said they are they are lowly placed on the table, six games in our in hand. I don't see them finishing top three. The only way back to the continent is the Federation Cup. They can win the Federation Cup. That's the only way back to the continent. Now we have seen the most stars try to look at the continent twice. They just need to be more consistent. They have very good organization. So um, if Remo gets a third chance on the continent, who knows? They might just do better than they've done in the previous seasons. Uh, Aima can still do that if they're back on the continent. The Rangers have been away for a long time. I don't know how ready they are for the continent. But maybe um, I'm, I'm looking at Remo stars. So I said, Lobby stars if they get to the continent. Lobby stars, uh, their new chairman, Dominic Yoffa, he has been there, he has seen it all, he has done it all. And the last time Lobby, in Nigeria Club was in the group stage of the Cup Champions League was Lobby Stars. So the club uh, have that foundation. Uh, apart from these ones, I, I think any other club that managed to get to the continent will just struggle. Because playing on the continent is just, it's not just about getting the team together to play. There's a whole lot involved. A whole lot involved. From the government angle, the sponsorship, to the management angle, to the coaching, to the players, to even the supporters of the club, the media angle, it's a whole, it's a, it, 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 it's, it, it's a whole thing there. It, so we are there, our clubs, we are not just ready. We are going to get there. Like I said, I, I like what Remo Stars are doing. If they can keep at it, I like what Remo Stars are doing. I like what Rangers are doing too. They can, they can keep at it. I also like what Lobby Stars are doing. But we need to do better. And we'll get there surely. Slowly but surely we'll get there. All right. Uh, slowly but surely we will get there. Thank you very much, uh, China Cherry, for your quality time. Uh, we can only hope for the best when it comes to Nigerian football. Thank you very much. The pleasure is my favor.